Hey everyone, Paul Preston here from the Movie Guys on the red carpet at the opening night gala for Outfest, which is going to include an award given to Brian Fuller, the great TV producer and TV show creator. And we're going to screen God's Own Country, which was a huge hit at Sundance. We're going to see it here tonight. What I love most about being in downtown LA is a lot of these movie theaters have been turned into jewelry stores or urban outfitters. Tonight, the Orpheum will be a movie theater. I'm a big fan. Let's talk to some people. It seems to be a love fest for Brian Fuller out here. Absolutely. I mean, Brian's an incredible storyteller and often spends his time telling stories that focus on characters that are usually not fully developed or fully realized in a lot of mainstream content. So an important storyteller and a great human being. Now, I was telling her, sadly, I haven't seen a lot of American Gods. I'm a movie guy. I get out to a lot of movies. I understand. But who do you play in it then? That Because, that, man, from what I hear, every character is wildly unique on that show. It's an amazing show. I play a Nancy, sometimes known as Mr. Nancy, uh, based on the African spider god from the Ghanaian culture. It's, uh, it's a wonderful character and a lot of fun. He didn't go, I play a cop. No. <laughs> no. I play a um, cop. I arrested four bad guys last week. Um, Two of them turned out to be actually be good guys, and uh, that made the story really interesting. So uh, <laughs> you can catch that on every other network. That's exactly right. No, not not what Stars is doing, and uh, not Brian Fuller fair. That's for sure. Uh, hey, we're here with a uh, friend of the movie guys, Ross Marquand. Uh, let let the record state he appeared on our showcast many moons ago, and then immediately Walking Dead saw him there. You would you would agree to all this? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And, and then hired him. Yep. Everything, exactly what he said. In 1977, George Lucas's epic space opera, Star Wars, redefined space entertainment. And now, director J.J. Abrams takes us to a galaxy far, far away. By the way, uh, I want to tell you, I heard you as Han Solo on the Trials of Tatooine. Oh, yeah. Went over to the IMAX VR. You know, not just in your house, but you know the IMAX VR opened across from the Grove where you can go there. check. I went there. Did you like it? It's cool, yeah, absolutely. I get to hear Han Solo yelling at you. It's fun. Come on, Padawan. Pick up the lightsaber and let's go. What brings you out to Outfest? Do you were affiliated with one of the projects here or just coming out to see everything? My friend Rachel has a show here called Bicultural, and I had a show here five years ago with Glenn Kaiser called uh, Sabbatical, so that was, it's hard to believe it's gone by that fast. It was right around the time that I think it was on your podcast, I think. 2012, 2013? 13, 14? It's by so fast, I don't know. It's a lot of zombies ago. A lot of zombies, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, I love I love what the festival does, and, and it's it's just good to come back here because it's been been a hot minute. How is it that you have survived all this time on The Walking Dead? Let me ask you. You probably ask that all the time, but people are dying left and right, and there goes Aaron. Uh, he's a survivor. He's a he's a strong character. I mean, I, I think you know, everyone at this point is up for potential execution by Negan or zombie. You name it. There's so many threats now. Uh, so I feel very fortunate that I, it has lasted for four seasons now on the show because I think he's a great character and he represents a, a lot of what we need to see in, in film and TV is more diversity. Actually, now that you think about that, has what has been the response from the uh, gay and lesbian community to Aaron? It's been fantastic, and, and I think you know, uh, w recently with Jesus coming out as well, you know, now we have we have four uh, you know out characters on our show, and I think that's. Like I was just saying, like having more representation from the LGBTQ community is so important, you know, especially on a popular show like The Walking Dead. Yatide Badaka. Oh my Boom! He got it. He got it. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. I play Bilquis, the goddess of love, and I, I guess I'm involved in maybe one or two WTF moments. Worship me. Pray to me like I'm your god. Your goddess because as a goddess, I devour my uh, worshipers in a very particular way. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, as a goddess, I devour my, I thought, that, why can't gods be nice? Oh no, it's nice. They get to live in a eternal world of joy and ecstasies. So. After you eat them. Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's the payoff, that's all. <laughs> we get a picture. Okay, oh, yeah, now, get a picture. Beth Grant is, <laughs> Beth Grant is storming the interview. I am storming the interview. Yes, do it. You TV guy, do no, you. I'm not a. Guy. I'm a movie guy. You're a movie guy, not a. TV I'm guy. learning about TV here in this interview. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm telling him about all the amazing. Because he knows everything. It sounds like the most effed up show in the history of mankind. She's pretty epic. She is. Oh, she's epic. 
Does she eat you or at all? Or she see? She tell me how much she's eating. Everything. I'm hoping that you know oh, somewhere no. down the road. I've, I volunteered the first night. She did volunteer, but I'm saying I, we all want to see a whole lot more of Beth. Grant. So I like the way Brian works. He can just volunteer. Hey, I'd like to do this, and then he lets you. All right, we got a little elbow room on the red carpet. Some people over there didn't show up. How do you not show up? How do you say, hey, I'm a media outlet. I'm going to come down and cover Outfest, and then not show up? I don't know who didn't show up. Maybe Hollywood Flip. The Advocate, you know they're here. Hollywood Reporter, is it them? I think it's Hollywood Reporter. Shame. Shame. It's just a lot to see. This is my first Outfest. And I'm like, every night there's like two or three movies I want to see. you got to pick one. You do. It's very, very hard. Um, I suggest like getting a game plan and kind of like, you know, maybe and getting some drinks. Game plan and drinks, and I think whatever you see is going to be wonderful. Can you bring drinks in the DGA? I, I think you can. You can just do it anyway. Is what Your purse, you know, yes. Yeah, I want to see more stuff, period. I got to get out more. This is, you need to get out more. It's a new stage in my life, especially as a trans person. We're used to sort of living stealth, you know, because when you can live stealth, you can avoid a lot of the drama and people treating you a certain way. So it's a bold, courageous step to live your life out and proud and openly and you know haters be damned because i'm gonna shine my light i'm miss ross honey Get to the i love that i love that <laughs> we're here with bob the drag queen who is here with assad you were a winner on uh, drag race yeah i was the winner of RuPaul's drag race season eight yeah I'm, but i'm no longer reigning i'm just a, i'm just a citizen like you a pedestrian <laughs> What? It's just a pathetic it's bum. like you. It's like the rest of you. But of course, at this point, the current reigning queen might be watching, so it's Sasha, not like you, like everyone else. Oh, I like Sasha. Well well disclaimed. Very nice. Uh, is it like ex-presidents? Do you just wander the, you know, do you still do, do you still do things, you know, that are important to the community? Exactly. I'm still a very important figurehead in our community. Emphasis on the head. Um, and, but, I'm, but now I'm just, you know, living my days. I'm going to go out to pasture. I've been a lot more calm these days. I don't have anything to prove. I don't have anything to prove to you guys. <laughs> Except you've put together a comedy special right here. Yes, I have a stand-up comedy special called Suspiciously Large Woman, filmed in my hometown in Atlanta, Georgia, and it is just my views on politics, Beyonce, and white people. I have a theory that Beyonce never knew Michelle was in Destiny's Child. <laughs> Why is this backup dancer singing so loud? What the? We have the director and the star of tonight's big movie, God's Own Country, with us. Now, this is an entirely British film, correct? And, and then, so it gets into Sundance. How did that whole experience go down for you? It was incredible. Um, we went as a little British film, and um, the buzz was incredible. The reviews were insane. And we came away having sold it to every country we could on our way to Berlin International Film Festival for the European premiere. It was, it was incredible, yeah, it was really cool. And we won a prize, which was very surprising and very lovely. It's great that tonight that your film is bringing the Orpheum back to life as a movie house. Okay. I got to tell you, I'm really excited about that. Let's not usually show movies then. This. They, they have revived it recently. I mean, some of them have just gone dead entirely. Right. But they've revived this one over the years recently for musical acts. Okay. It may show movies every once in a while. It's not a regular house, though. But for special events like this, I'm really excited to see it showing right. your film tonight. Thank you. Yeah, we no. Hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we hope everybody likes it. Yeah, yeah. Luis Fernandez, who stars in the film Tamara. Tamara, it's yes. not Tamara, that would be American. Yeah, yeah, Tamara. And it's an amazing story based on the real life of Tamara Adrian, the first congresswoman, to, the, the first a woman, a transgender woman to be elected to Congress in Latin America. And uh, can you imagine that difficult journey and actually being a congresswoman nowadays in Venezuela is even harder. So she's, she's not afraid of challenge. So to play her was a humbling experience. It was very hard and I'm very proud of this film and to be part of Outfest is amazing. She's in the opposition. She's one of the uh, loudest voices of opposition right now. She's actually in the streets as we speak, fighting for the most essential human rights, not only for the transgender community anymore, but for every single Venezuelan. So her job is amazing, and we're gonna be talking about her for a long time. You've met her? 
Uh, she's my friend. We met 10 years ago in a radio show and we became friends. And years later, this project comes to me and it was like, this This is meant to be. It came to you and you just said, but I know this person. I Yeah, I didn't say, I didn't tell that to the director. I just said, okay, I, I do, I'm very close to the trans uh, agenda. I, I, you know, I'm in there, I'm an activist for their rights. And, and uh, the director was a little bit uh, overwhelmed how, how much I knew about the trans community. And then I told her, listen, she's my friend. I had my uh, the trans community so much for their resilience and their bravery. I mean, they all the rights that we take for granted on a daily basis, they have to fight for every single right, minute by minute. So can you imagine how hard that is? So, so to, to accomplish big things and to have visibility and, and uh, be acknowledged, I think it's uh, something they, they very much deserve and it's so long overdue. Taking it for granted, I think, is the key there. We often do, way too often. We take for granted. We look at the mirror and we see us and we go out. They have to really go through a process. It's very, very hard. I mean, when you're trapped in a body that's not yours and you have to really talk about integrity. We, all, we are all pretending to be someone else. Talk about fighting to be who you are when you don't even have the body of the person who, that you really are. It's a, it's a big deal. It's major. I would say you're pretty inspiring too. That was, I, I th I'd say you're pretty inspiring pretty too. I think passionate you've, about this you've wrapped thing. your head around I'm it pretty well. Very passionate about the pro this film and about the issues and about having this kind of conversations. Not only in Latin America, even here in the States, it's more important than ever. When discriminatory, hateful rhetoric is validated at the Oval Office all the way to the most humble dinner table in America, we need to be having this conversation. Uh, we need to have celebrate diversity every single day and Outfest is doing this uh, greatly and I'm very proud to be here. Miguel Sagas, he is an actor in the new film Cherry Pop that's showing here at the fest. What I love about being on the red carpet here is before the fest even starts I get to ask everyone what their film is about. So let's, this is the pictures man. Pitch me Cherry Pop and why I should go. It's a comedy. It's a comedy about all the drama that happens inside a drag club. So if you're a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race there's a lot of uh, characters that came out of that show that are in the film uh, and I get to be the Latin American drag queen so I mean it's perfect. Comedy always comes from drama and it touches upon a lot of topics that I think will relate to a lot of people especially kind of where we are now as a society. So I, It does, you know, I've seen a couple of mainstream comedies that will remain unnamed but they were completely lacking any truth to the pain in the comedy and then by the time you got to cash in on it there's nothing to cash in on and you just walk in and out without getting anything out of it. I think the difference with Cherry Pop is that there is a message, there is an underlying message of truth. Um, when I prepped for this character, because I had never done drag before, I stepped into this set with a lot of respect for these women and I came out of it with even more. Because I realized it's not just put a, a wig, uh, the makeup and the nails and the heels. It creates a character so that it feeds a stronger voice. This is where you get the pitch your movie and tell us all what it's about for those who may not know what it is as you launch it and get it off the ground. So tell us all about it. Yeah, it's about a young man who's uh, we're tra following him in his four years of college. He's kind of grown up training himself on the classic Hollywood romances. Uh, he's also openly gay, so when he starts experiencing gay dating, he starts to feel that the things that make gay culture unique don't uh, match with his classic Hollywood ideal, so he starts to feel almost alienated by the gay community. And it's a dark comedy. That was my first thought, is like, not a lot of gay experiences to be shared in the Philadelphia story and it happened one night and all that kind of thing. How do you, how do you work all that in? I mean, essentially wanted to tell a story about somebody who was already out and felt comfortable being out and surrounded by people who approve of that, but actually doesn't feel like he fits in with the community that he's been prescribed to. He feels very much more like the black and white traditional heteronormative romance. So I wanted that kind of uh, gay character represented because I knew it was somebody I could identify with. Hopefully others could identify with it too. Do you star in the film, or are you the writer-director? Writer-director and star. <laughs> okay, listen, I, I want to launch into doing that very thing, and I can't imagine it is easy. What are the biggest challenges of doing something like that? First, first time director? First time. What, is, what are the biggest challenges? Well, we had a micro budget. Uh, it was all Kickstarter, all crowdfunded. The biggest challenge for me was we didn't have budget for a stand-in, so I was directing, but I also had to be standing there while they set up the camera and lighting around me. You couldn't get a friend? Like, nobody came out? A couple times, but for the most part, it was me frozen, yelling at people from across the room. And we're here with uh, Jeffrey Schwartz, who has a film in Outfest called The Fabulous Alan Carr. On the title alone, I'm going. Well, you're a movie fan, right? Absolutely. So you've seen Grease? 
I've seen Greece. You've seen Can't Stop the Music with the Village People? Uh, you know, I don't lead with that, but I have. Okay, well, Alan Carr is responsible for those movies. What are the, the biggest hit musical of all time to that date and the biggest flop musical of all time to that date. So his career, he was a producer, and he lived large, and he had big dreams, and he wanted to make people happy. He wanted to make musicals that would bring everybody together and make people forget their problems, right? So this is something we need a lot of right now. Uh, and Alan Carr made Grease for that, for that reason. And it was a sensation. It was a, a, a major hit around the world. It's basically one of the classics of all time now. It's like Wizard of Oz. It's going to be playing 100 years from now. And if it wasn't for Alan Carr, there really would be no Grease. What was his life like that we'll see in this documentary? Well, Alan Carr grew up loving movies. He grew up in the 50s when movies were it. He's a movie guy. He was a movie guy. Like us, the movie guy. He was like you guys. He probably, you know, he would go to theaters like this and see musicals and when stars were bigger than life and he's like I want to be part of that world but he didn't want to be a movie star he wanted to be a producer you know he was like I want to create magic and that's what he did and he basically came here to live his dream he got a, a, a house in the Hollywood Hills he built a disco in the basement and he had all the stars come to him so they could party in his basement and he created magic the most important thing is that our stories are being told for the first time and not the, only, the last time, and it's more important in today's political climate to show visibility. And that's one of the things that Reverie really stands for. So, And you've sponsored OutFest. How many times have you been here uh, before now? Oh my god, I've been to OutFest like a million times. Uh, I, could, I was here as an actor, a director, a writer, as press, as a host, as a million different things. This is my first time attending as a CEO. So no brainer to, to sponsor. Of course, yeah. Now when you actually have a viable business and you figure out what you're going to do in Hollywood, you're like, now you can actually give back. And so we are happy to give back to organizations like OutFest. We can't wait for Hollywood to write these roles for us. We got to create them ourselves. So that's what we're doing. I, that's like, that, I, that, I read that two different ways. We can't wait. Also, look, we can't wait. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Could there be a group of people more fun to talk to? This will not be my last Outfest. It's my first, and I dug the red carpet a ton. Looking forward to seeing this movie, and of course, there'll be more movies throughout the week. Check the Outfest.org website and find whatever screening. At, hey, if you met someone here, as I did, that their movie interests you, go check it out and support this fantastic festival. Thanks.